Welcome to another video. Recently, Anthropic released their new model, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. This new model is the first of their 3.5 lineup. If you don't know, they have three models for each generation in their lineup. The low-spec and cheaper model, called Haiku, the middle ground model called Sonnet, and the biggest and best model called Opus. So, you can think of this model as the middle ground of the next-gen Claude models. This new model has a 200K context window and is multimodal as well. So, it should work with all your images, videos, PDFs, and everything, which is pretty cool. They also say that it is twice as fast and sets new industry benchmarks for graduate-level reasoning, undergraduate-level knowledge, and coding proficiency. It shows marked improvement in grasping nuance, humor, and complex instructions, and is exceptional at writing high-quality content with a natural, relatable tone. Claude 3.5 Sonnet operates at twice the speed of Claude 3 Opus. This performance boost, combined with cost-effective pricing, makes Claude 3.5 Sonnet ideal for complex tasks such as context-sensitive customer support and orchestrating multi-step workflows. They also say that in their coding evaluation, they found that it performs significantly better in solving bugs and generating code. Claude 3.5 Sonnet is also their best vision model yet. It can accurately transcribe text from imperfect images, which is pretty cool. They have also launched a new feature called Artifacts. With this feature, whatever file or code Claude generates can be easily viewed directly in the chat interface. This is pretty cool if you want to generate web pages, SVG files, and stuff like that. Now, let's look at the benchmarks. In the benchmarks, it performs insanely better than Claude 3 Opus, which was their previous best model, as well as GPT 4.0, Gemini 1.5 Pro, and Llama 400B early benchmarks that were released. In the Human Evil benchmark, it shows great results by scoring 92, which is well above GPT 4.0 and others. The Sonnet model also outperforms others by a lot in the GPQA benchmark, which is also really good. The only place where it falls short is in the Math benchmark, where it lags behind by 5 points. Let's also look at the Vision benchmarks. In these benchmarks, it beats everyone else in most of the tests, apart from the MMMU benchmark, where GPT-4.0 beats it by a little bit. In the Chat QA benchmark, it also beats others by a major point, which is also really cool to see. So, in benchmarks, it's pretty good. But now let's try it out. It's available on their platform to try for free. So, you can use that. But I'll be using their API to check it out. I'll be giving it these questions one by one, and we'll see if it passes each question. The first question is a simple one here. I am asking it to give me a number that rhymes with the word used to describe a plant. The answer to this should be three, because it rhymes with tree, or nine, because it rhymes with vine. So, this is quite simple, but some LLMs get very confused by it. Let's send it and check. Okay, it answers correctly, so this is a pass. Next, we have more of a reasoning question. In this question, the answer is expected to be 2. Let's send it. Okay, it answers 3 because it also calculates the value of the leftover apple pie, which is quite in-depth reasoning. It says there are two raw apples and one half apple pie worth one apple. So, I would consider it a pass. Next, we have another reasoning question. The answer should be 1. Let's send it. Okay, it answers correctly as well. Pretty cool. Now, we have the coding questions, which I'm most excited about. The first question is to create an HTML page with a button that, when clicked, 
makes confetti blow up on the page. Let's send the prompt. One thing I have to say is that it's pretty fast. Anyway, we have the code now. Let's run it. Okay, it works fine. So, this one's also a pass for me. Next, we have an SQL query prompt. Here, I ask it to write an SQL query to find the Fibonacci sequence. Let's send it and check. Okay, we have the query here. This query is correct. So, it's pretty good in SQL as well. I'll give this a pass. Now the next one's a little difficult. Here I'm asking it to create an SVG of a butterfly. Let's send it and check. So, this is the SVG code it has given. Let's check it. Okay, this looks fine. It doesn't have the bells and whistles, but it's pretty good. Now, let's try the next prompt. Here I'm asking it to create a full modern and minimal looking landing page. If I send it here, you can see the code it outputs. Let's try to run it as well. Okay, this is a very small landing page. I would have liked it to be longer. Plus, I asked it to add animations, and it just added a simple transition animation. I don't prefer this landing page. Gemini creates better landing pages with simple prompts. So, this one's not a pass for me, but some of you might like it, and it will get better with more detailed prompts. But in this, I generally prefer Gemini. Next, we'll prompt it to generate a game of life program in Python. So, let's send it and check its output. Okay, here's the code. Let's run it and check if it works. Okay, if I run it here, you can see it works pretty well. This is one of the best generations I have seen, and it worked in just one shot, which is also amazing. Another thing that I want to test it for is multimodal inputs. I won't go in depth of these features, but I want to send it this meme, which is an open source versus Windows meme. Let's send it and check if it can explain it well. Okay. So, it explains it pretty well. This is one of the first model, which can also tell who is in the photo, like it tells that there's Leonardo in the picture, as well as it understands that it's the Linux Mint desktop and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. So, now I think this is the best model for coding tasks, as well as general tasks, which is really amazing. It performs extremely well and is the best across almost all scenarios. I'm pretty stoked to see the Opus model now. OpenAI needs to catch up. They mentioned they'll release the Opus and Haiku models later this year. They also say they are experimenting with different modalities, which may mean we can see a model like GPT-40 from them. That would be pretty cool if it happens. Let me know if you guys want a co-pilot video with this new Sonnet model. I think it will be pretty cool. Also, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.